Uh, greetings, everybody. <clears throat> you are welcome to the uh, Wounded Civilian uh, Political uh, Classroom. In this place, <clears throat> nobody remains a fool because we teach the people proper. And maybe our brother is here with us. In this place, nobody remains a fool because we teach people proper. Uh, we are going to discuss Nigeria politics today, most especially uh, Edo State politics. Uh, Edo State is our state. Whatever happened in our state is our concern. We are not like those who bring uh, terror to their people, who bring uh, sorrow and tears and blood, all in the name of uh, our state. We only have one state in Nigeria. And that state is very important to us. That is the reason why, uh, the reason why whenever there is chaos, trouble in Edo states, all Edo people, both home and abroad, you know, they start talking about it. We don't need troubles. You understand me? In our state, uh, our brother is with us here, uh, Mr. Oriahi. I call him, always call him Oriahi, the comrade show, Mr. Bonusa Oriahi. Is here with us and uh, before we start uh, brother can you hear me yes i can hear you can you hear me of course yeah loud and clear yeah oh, good. so my brother uh, you are welcome to the program and before i start i want to thank you for uh i invited you and you didn't reject me you said as long as uh we are talking about politics, I do politics or Nigeria politics as a brother, you say no problem, I should give you that. And uh, you are here right now with us. Please, can you please introduce yourself to my uh, fans or to my followers here? Okay, I'm just uh, I'm simply coming along to you, Mo Sorry, uh, from Edo State, of, of course, like you know. Okay. Thank you very much, my brother, uh, for coming to the Wounded Civilian uh, Show. Uh, for some time now, I've been, you know, uh, following you also, you know, uh, you do your own, you, you are not that kind of a radical man, you understand me? You do your own in a gentleman way. And uh, what makes me really to invite you, it was two videos when uh, this boy in Lagos says some certain things concerning our kingdom, that's you know this boy I'm talking about who turned himself to, to a woman. Oh. I don't want to mention his name. Yeah. I saw that video. I, you know, I said, wow. Because I was thinking, you know, because you are a friend to the governor. Gov I know governor do come to your show. So, so I was surprised when you make that video. And the last video you make when we came, travel to Edo, and the way you balance it, you know, no need, you know, we were trying to say no need to fight. There is no, where, where, where people fight, we will make progress. Make peace. It doesn't matter. The governor will be the governor for eight years. There's nothing anybody can do about it. Then we were trying to say make peace. Try and make peace. So that video really, you know, touched my heart. So I said, okay, I have a, a plan of inviting people, politicians, people who have interest in Nigeria, who talk about Nigeria problems, you know, to my show, I said, no, I have to invite you. So my brother, once again, you are welcome to the Wounded Civilian uh, program. So let us start. Um, you are close to the governor, right? I think everybody, every other state person is close to the governor. Okay. Uh, and I know gov uh, the governor do come to your show. Uh, I've seen him on your show several times so uh this uh a few days ago there was protest in ovia northeast concerning this school and name coming to our state uh somebody like me i i was one of those who supported the governor in fact we are the people we did so many things yeah, everybody knows because he was the right person to support at that time. Uh, our brother, Iran Omigo, have invited me to his program. I let them understand. I might not be supporting him now, but I still, if you, if you uh, like go to election again, and I will still kind of support him, because I believe 
because he's the right person at that time. I might not be kind of supporting him now. So I want to ask, uh, with the insecurity, we are hearing people killing people in our villages. Sometimes in Yokoriomo, they are always blaming the Fulanese, the Fulani coming to their, you know, coming to our land, the right in our, uh, and we have a new state security network in Benin City there. Why is it that we are still hearing that Fulani coming to our land? What the governor, because you are close to him, I know. Tell me, why we are still hearing this kind of news that people killing people in our villages? Okay, I think, I think uh, first of all, I want to thank you for having me, you know, uh, but I think we need to put some things in perspective properly. Um, this is not making excuses for anybody, per se, uh, but just trying to you know, establish certain facts. One, first, um, my interest in Governor Baseki is at those states, primarily. Yeah. Um, my relationship with the Edo State government is for just one interest, for the betterment of Edo State. Anything outside of that, I, I am out of it. So I am, not, uh, I am not a blind follower of anybody. I'm a very objective follower. That's one. Second aspect is this. The issue of insecurity is not peculiar to Edo State. I want us all of to understand that. Uh, this is a matter as a national problem. Of course. And uh, what a lot of people may not equally understand too is that uh, security majorly particularly with what we expect our governors to be doing is something that falls under the exclusive legislative list of the government of nigeria which means that it's only the federal government the law permits to have a police to protect nigerians so, which only means that the initiative that governors have taken to form vigilantes, like the Amote Kuns and stuff like that, there is a, a limit to which they can go. As a matter of fact, if you want to, if you want to apply the Nigerian law currently as it stands, all of those are they are illegal because they contravene, you know, the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is why many people are calling for. A review of the constitution. People are calling for, uh, for what they call uh, uh, having a national discourse to reset and remap the Nigerian arrangement. That is one. Then, another fact I want to establish is this: even in nations and states where things appear to be like normal, you know, advanced societies, you know, every now and again. There are still security lapses here and there. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, the other day, in uh, was it in New Orleans? You know, uh, there was a matter of insecurity that led to the death of a number of persons. These are very established words. Now, zeroing down to our peculiarity as Nigerians, particularly with full and me me. One, I, I mean, I, I have a platform, the Comrade Show. I do broadcast. You know, probably one, one of the, the few things that make me a bit uh, on my own different, you know, is that I try as much as possible to investigate what is going on. Um, ironically, I am from Ovia Northeast. I'm partly from Ovia Northeast. As a matter of fact, one of these recent incidents reported happened in a village very close to my own. And so I have gone to try to investigate. I'm I had a broker to discuss a do security situation today, as a matter of fact. And certain things came out, they are quite revealing. I, in my investigation, I found out that so many cows that come to a do state are owned by do state people. Many of the cows that come to a do state are owned by a do state people. The full of the people who are heading these cows are working for the Edo State people who own these cows. It is pure business for them. Okay. Oh, uh, my brother. Yeah. You now, said the what you just said. I'm coming. Yes. What you just said, you said these cows and the full of these coming to our land, they are working for Edo kind of Edo big uh, men. Our people. Majorly. Uh, 
Okay, and this Fulanese are killing our people. Is it not the duty? Yes. If really, if you know, it means the governor know. You understand? If you know, it means the governor know. Is it not the government, the, especially the governor responsibility to let the Edo state people know? People are dying. You know, when somebody don't die in your family, you don't know how painful it is. People are dying. People are dying. If Edo rich men, they are the people that owns this cow. Publish their name out. Let them call their full and their workers to order. They are killing Edo people. They have right to live. Your life is your life. My life is my life. You can come and sneak my life out of me. You hear? No. So don't you think the governor is the one responsible? If really, because I, I'm sorry, I don't really believe what you just said now. That is Edo people that owns the cow. Why would they do people go and employ full army to come to your own land and be slaughtering your people? Okay. Go ahead. Um, let me quickly establish something here, first and foremost. Um, I am here in my capacity as Comrade Lamptey Mozaria here. And I'm not speaking for the governor for or the government of Edo State. Okay, I understand that. Of course, of course, yeah. I understand. I'm, yeah. I'm speaking as an independent person. And you may equally yeah. know too, you may also know too that I do not hold any official position in the government of Edo State. I know. So I don't speak course, in any course. capacity whatsoever. Of course, I know. I'm speaking like an Edo State person who's interested in ensuring that we find solutions to the issues. So uh, you may of ask course. me certain questions bordering on what government knows and what government doesn't know. I may not be able to respond to them because I may not you know, have those answers. However, I want to speak based on as, as, okay. as, as an, a, a do state person, which this matter affects directly and indirectly. The villages that are close to my village that have lost people, some of them are members, some of those villagers are extended members of my own, you know, village, you know, by way of family and all of that. Some of those people migrated from my own village to do some of those villages where, you know, and again, uh, the entire of their notice right now is on the air. People don't go to farms anymore. They are afraid because what has happened in the other distant village, they are afraid could happen in their own village, as it were, and all of that. So at the end of the day, you know, what affects the eye is affecting the nose. And so therefore, I'm going to speak holistically on the matter because the believing man says, okay, and I'm not here to come and vindicate, to come and vindicate you know, or speak in defense of anybody, not the governor, not anybody. Because right now, Edo State is on the edge, Nigeria is on the edge. And that's what I first established. There's an extent to which I would pass blame to anybody. The highest person who is culpable in all of this matter is the president of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, who today I describe, based on the things happening, as a terrorist sympathizer. The Benin man says, you understand? Yeah. So, as as in Nigeria, in security wise, in security wise, you understand? So, placing yeah. everybody right now in this imbroglio. Now, coming to a do state by way of zeroing down, I will give huge kudos to the Edo state vigilante. Um, I'm aware, you know, fully informed that they are doing very well. I'm equally aware. To that they lack certain amenities to confront this terror by way of weapons and all of that. <laughs> Honestly, like I only, that's why I was trying to establish some things earlier. And I'm equally aware too that based on the provisions of the constitution, which restrains the state government, the government of Edo State or any other government for that matter cannot publicly say they want to go to the market and procure arms. They don't have the right whatsoever to do so. That's why I established earlier that even all these vigilantes are looking at the law of the land, they are illegal. You understand what I'm saying now? But somehow a desperate time called for a desperate measure. And so we have what we have right now. Now, when, when I established earlier that a number of people in a do state own cows, it's, it is a business for them. Okay? They invest in these cows that come to a do state. Okay, so the the and and the war happening is happening between the villagers and the herders, and people are dying. So my solution I prefer today, and I've made this very bold and you know plain, 
People called into my program, so they have a lot of people call, calling and all of that. And people, you know, were saying different things, and all, many of them made a lot of sense and all of that. People have questioned why the governor has not yet signed the anti-open grazing bill into law. I wanted to ask I you that come, question. Yes, I'm coming. I have further equally added that even signing into law is one. Oily the bill to ensure that all the components of that bill they are working to protect the those three people is another very important thing. And we want these two things to come as a matter of fact as soon as yesterday. Okay. Now in the interim, I have proffered publicly, and I'm saying it on your program right now, that we cannot afford to have this terror very, very much under our nose. I think the government right now should declare every cow in a do state as illegal right now until is... everything is put, put in place to ensure that we guarantee the security of lives and property. Every cow in, in a do state should be illegal to the extent that anywhere they are seen, they should be killed and pepper souped for people to eat freely. This I this is this bad position. The people are able to retaliate and fight. It will cause more chaos. They know this this bad opposition because I, I remember back then when I was in Spain. Okay, if you, if any cow strays into the streets, every cow has a number. With that number, it is like a place number. They can be identified. They know who be, who it belongs to. They know the family it's coming from. We need to have some of those mechanisms in place. People need to be able to sit down in government to know how many number of cows are in a those states and where each of them is. The government has made provision for ranching, which is a good thing. We, can, we don't forbid cow, but cow is a personal business. Mm -hmm. If you are doing this business, mm -hmm. procure or rent a place. Put your cows there. If you don't have uh, food to give your cow, or there are no leaves, they go and buy hay from a dusty people that cannot be doing business of hay so that you can be feeding your cow. These are measures we have proffered. You understand? Now, why government has not yet started doing even what government has provided for by, by way of the law, they, the government itself has, you know, uh, of course, uh, the, National, the House of Assembly has passed. To what extent they are doing or they are not doing, I don't know. Okay, but I am concerned because right now, you know, or where Utumega, Utumega, or I say, or Hokwe or something, now, Ogwe, Ogwe, Tue. Yeah. Would you understand what I'm saying now? So we are concerned. Now, they are, they are in a VR notice approaching the uh, Ubogyo, probably to a care of the law and all of that. Before yeah. long, the business is quite right right now. Now. Uh -huh. And I said, I don't know, I saw it, don't know. You understand what I'm saying? So we are really, really very concerned. You know, and uh, I think <laughs> that, um, you know, I know the constraint based on the laws of the land, you know, that government is having. But I do know that the same government can help to governize people. Ah, we you know, Because security is sensitive. We may not need to say everything. You understand what I'm saying now? Uh, because a door is such a place that, you know, and I, I we, today I prefer the measure. The idea of you know, one uh, full and is, you know, uh, is, uh, I mean, is captured or uh, something happened to the person and everybody's carrying camera like there's one big victory. And, uh, those ideas should be stopped. There should be a defense line, right? I think so, for, you know, around a door at our villages. You know, uh, can I know I'm You know, I'm weird, I'm weird, I'm weird. Then we move on. No, no noise. I think this should be the case. Now without vigilantes, mm -hmm. we should empower them to get the job done. You understand what I'm saying now? Another thing again, we, I came to find that is every Fulani person that is being you know, arrested for every header, let me not use the word Fulani because there are some other people equally healthy, you know, that is being arrested. With ease, I came to understand that you know, police will just swoop in, you know, take over the matter, and before long, somehow, mm. They are reportedly yeah. released. We cannot independently yeah. verify that. And, and that, that brings to mind why, you know, a those state people need to adopt, you know, their own level of justice to pro protect a those state people. Of course. So this, this, this is my take personally on this matter because Ogba Mahiagbe, it's, it's, it's all over us. So my brother, so my brother uh, the way you, this is security problem, the way you put it, uh, I really understand. You understand me? Um, you are you are neutral. You don't want to say because of uh, 
and uh, the people you were really neutral, which uh, I'm very happy the way you put it. May I understand? I believe the people watching us here understand what you are trying to say. To the extent of Mr. Mutana, you are talking about, and that's very good. And that's very good. Now, um, the political fight. We, will go, we are going to talk about so many things today. Maybe one, at least one, say one hour with us here. I don't know. Yeah, well, we're not busy. Okay, okay. You are very, you are a busy man, you know. But let's talk about the um, the the governor is not a, a PDP member, a PDP member, and the other, a few few weeks ago, if not over, almost over a month now, a governor of um, uh, uh, River State says some certain things against our governor, and somebody like me, I won't say you are here. I don't blame Governor Wiki. I don't really blame Governor Wiki. But some people were saying. Why would they? Uh, and look at what happened uh, about a few days ago. Governor Wiki came to Edo uh, State. He didn't say the governor. And I watched your video too. I like the way you put it too. Uh, governor Wiki is supposed to tell the governor, really. You are coming to. And that is PDP problem. PDP in a problem. Both of them are PDP governors. So it is not the, our fight. It's supposed to be PDP fight to settle these two governors. And I don't blame the palace also. You understand me? Uh, uh, when governor, what governor, what, what governor Wiki said concerning our governor, because of what the deputy said, you know, they want to leave the party and the rest. Don't you think for the deputy and the governor kind of threatening to leave the party that, because they are, the reason why they are threatening to leave the party, for instance, is like they are not being accepted. So to me, I feel when you say you want to leave the party that give you the opportunity, you are still a deputy governor and you are still the governor and you bring your secretary of state from your APC when you were coming. You don't supposed to be complaining. So I, I, what did you have to say to that? Because people begin to call the governor ungrateful, stuff like that. But just what do you have to say? Is the governor really Obamayesi? with the way things played out with what they are doing there, there are there are many things that uh, we cannot uh, we cannot boldly talk talk about because the extent to which we know may be very very limited okay. um and, 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 and politics is such a, a game where nobody's really interested in you they are just interested in themselves most of the time. So what I say happening in PDP is a game of um, people power trying struggle. to yeah power struggle. It's not it's not for the interest of those state people. To that extent, all I just advocate for is that people while they are fighting for their own selfish interests, they should consider that we have a masses that need to be sorted and need to be kept out for. So therefore, it is probably better they embrace peace. And uh, you know, and all of that, uh, they are, are probably not very pleased with with the way you know. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, when when the deputy governor spoke, I did speak about you know his outburst. I, I thought that uh, uh, it is uh, it is not very all right, yeah. uh, particularly being a deputy governor. You know, not being louder than his, uh, you know, his own yeah. boss. I thought that was not very right. The, on the part of Wiki, I, I thought Wiki too went too far over the line. And there's an aspect of Wiki that they go that way with me. I didn't speak about it at all, but you know, and that aspect where he said, "Who is your father?" Uh, yeah, yeah. But I know, I know people were kind of divided. Really, yeah, a lot you, of you people know, were on the Lot were governor Wiki side. The truth, the, truth, the truth is, uh, I understand the two people. The sentiment of people not liking Obaseki. Okay? So anything right now that challenges Obaseki, they want to take side with that, even if they don't agree with it. So I understand that sentiment. But for Wiki to make the statement to say, who is your father, that touches me personally. Because we live in, we've lived long in a society where if uh, people want to know if your father is not a famous person, Probably if uh, if the deputy governor was the son of uh, Isama Abini, he won't say who's your father. You see, all those nonsense are things we should not condone. Because saying that to about the deputy governor of a do state, he actually said that to about everybody who is aspiring to become something in life, as far as Nigeria is concerned. 
and I think that was highly derogatory. You know, it's um, it's an attitude very unbecoming of somebody who's even aspiring to become a president of a nation. You understand what I'm saying? So, but that aside, you know, but you know, I, I would expect that as a political party, they should be able to put their acts together. I am not really too much interested in what is happening, you know, how they are fighting to get their self-interest upon each other. I'm more interested in how this matter, you know, resonates with our people, how it benefits us or how it does not benefit us. So those are the areas as an ordinary Edo state indigenous, an ordinary Nigerian citizen, those are the areas that concern me as a person that I can be very and vocal about. Brother, brother, I watched your video about over a week ago. Uh, you were trying to uh, advise the governor to try and make peace. Because really, we know the governor is not uh, in good terms with some uh, top politicians in Edu, especially someone like Oshomole and the rest. I know whether they are in good terms, it doesn't really concern with the masses. But sometimes, you know, making peace sometimes is good when you see, you know, when these people are not kind of fighting themselves. You understand me? So you will kind of advise, it's concerning even the Baba, I mean, uh, yeah, the Baba. <laughs> you will even say, because ever since the Bini artifact, you know, misunderstanding between the Baba and the, the governor, uh, whenever there is any activities, uh, sometimes Buhari will send some minister to come to the parlor, maybe they will be returning some, some antiquity or Bini artifact from, uh, you know, Europe, you don't normally see, you don't see governor there. Governor don't go there. We all know the governor is not a good dance with the with Baba, with, with the king, you know, which is not that good as far as those concerned. So you were, I, I watched that your video, you were trying to advise, you can go to Baba and say, yeah, this being at the first thing, it's almost, it's not last year. Why, uh, what about my question, why is it that governor kind of, Anything that happened, he just keeps it in his mind. I see him like someone that keeps grudges in his mind. Did you see him like that? Is he, he would you say he's that kind of person? Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to speak speak to what uh, kind of person the governor of those state is, particularly with uh, the, the area you're talking about right now. Um, I mean, like, if the, if the governor is a, is, a, is a public officer. Uh, that's why when you said earlier that I'm, 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 I'm close to the governor, I think every believe person is close, every adult person is close to the governor. You know, we have a right to be close to the governor. You know, so what, what I have done is, uh, you know, um, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, is to appeal. You know, because I mean, now the way we, when we see things rich, now we talk put rich. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there may be more that we have not seen that we don't even know. But from what we have seen in the public space, we speak to that extent. And I'm a lover of peace. I'm a very peaceful person. And, so, and I think peace should even be more required of people in authority more than even the ordinary people. Because they should, be, they should show examples to the rest of us. So I have spoken, you know, more than two, three, four, five times, you know, that you know, um, asking particularly His Excellency, you know, uh, of course, appealing, you know, for him to embrace humility and peace in dealing with some of these situations. You know, uh, because in this world, there are some things sometimes you just do them. I don't wear Amarunde Ma, Amarunde Woman, Amarunde Marie Ma, Arundu Woman, you know, provided a man is eating. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, so, these are very important, uh, you know, matters. In the well, at the end of the day, when there is peace, progress is easier. You know, between the palace and the government, we saw it once or a couple of times. The Monoba Abini made a pronouncement concerning CDA. The government took it yeah. up, and we saw how effective it was. So it was beautiful. So uh, those people and, and, and again, to, to add to what you just said. To add to what you just said, some group of Benins, when the, the governor said there's something like Okaigil, something like that, some group of, you know, Edo's, they went to the palace demonstrating, saying, why would the governor, a chief came out and said, the governor is right. Governor said, 
There is nothing like okay. He's not safe because they said okay. is not kind of he cannot just say there's nothing like, there is okay. What we are saying, there is all these guys that are just selling land. Uh, they will say that you are not the chairman. That is what the governor is trying to to say. So I like the way the, the palace supported the governor. So we were surprised they are not in, you know, things are like this now. Well, um, well, we will speak to, I mean, to the man, the man, I can't, I mean, 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 you understand what I'm saying? But we love that harmony between our palace and, of course, our yeah. It's, yeah. it's important. The, the, the biggest problem I do say today is not what the governor is doing or what the governor is not doing. It is the deliberate blindness that many people who are very sentimental and are for against the governor are applying to the issues of Edo State and the governor. There are people, they don't want to see, they, uh, they don't want to know whether the, the governor of Edo State is doing anything good at all. Bewa, 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 bewa is their own. And they are very loud. Okay, why is he like that? Why is he like that? You know, you know, I, I tell you, you know, the into office it was not an election. It was an election that went against the run of play. It was not expected to be like that. So for those who probably supported, you know, that had the, you know, supported the, the opponents of the government go. So many of them, and again, yeah, there are quite a few others too that have been baptized even um, into them that supported the governor. Now they have little belief that the governor is not doing well enough. So they not join the other group. So everybody more, you have more voices calling for the governor's head. You understand what I'm saying uh, and all of that. And so, but we don't we don't reason like that. Wherever anybody does good, we we are very, you know, uh, I am very, you know, good to say, yeah, this thing is all right here. Yeah. But when it's not but all right, you, I'll, I'll be very bold to speak out. Yeah. But let me ask you, the governor, the governor, this year will be we will be six years in office this year. Can you tell me or tell the people here where the governor have performed well, like what he's doing? That make him, you know, you know. Okay, give him Mark, give him Mark. No, 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 no. I, I, for, no. For now, no, I, I can't. Okay. I'll tell you, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. I, I want, I will do it at some point. We will do it even on our comrade show. We are still watching. Okay. There okay. are promises made. We are trailing those promises. Some of those promises are being achieved. There's a huge chunk of them that is not yet achieved. You understand what I'm saying? Now, a lot is actually going on in the state. Okay. And so we are watching. So hopefully by the last quarter of this year, we are going to start evaluating the government against the backdrop of the promises made to the people of Edo State. But so far, so good. In some areas, okay, the man, you know, is meeting up with his promise. You understand what I'm saying? Now? But I'll tell you areas that I'm more, I am more impressed with, okay? And those, those are some areas that don't appeal to anybody, but this for most people. It is the areas where young people in Edo State are being trained now in different things, technology, you know, science, otherwise. Proper training going on. People are being trained and, you know, certified in different areas. Now, these things, we may not, we may not see the dividends of these things right now, you know, but later down the line, you know, these things are going to, but these guys are going to come out of these different trainings, the, you know, the government is affording them, and they're going to help to transform the state in, a, in no small measure, because the government is investing into, you know, the next century in, in, in those young people, Edo state young people. And so that, for me, it's, it's, it's more than the roads that they are constructing, or they are they are fixing. You get your goals. It is direct investment into human beings. I have people who have who are close to me. Some people who are my volunteers. They have benefited from some of those trainings. You understand what I'm saying? And they are not very equipped to contribute to societal development. You understand? And so that for me, it's major. You know, and, and I'm very key on the issue of education. I believe very strongly that, and I've, I've made that case to government, officially and non-officially, that. Every Edo State young person, the highest thing he can do that we, we score him highest for where I am is to ensure that we close the gap. Uh, you know, we have we still have many out of school people, young children, 
some that have never been to school at all. You know, I think progress should be made for all of them to be absorbed into school. You know, because Manuela. educating these young people will further, you know, guarantee a more sustainable future for Edo State in, in time to come. Okay, thank you very much. Before we continue, please, uh, those of you that is calling, asking questions, you are free to join us. And if you have any question, you can ask our brother. But you are going to call in through video call, and you can just like we do. We always do it here. Whenever we invite uh, people like like you know uh, politicians or uh, uh, government critics or a politician like our brother here, people normally call and ask him questions. You are very free to call through video call and ask him any question. Um, uh, by grace of God, I will invite people like uh, Abat Obaze to even uh, those uh even those that is not who don't really like or who, who always criticize the governor people like uh um Aibogun, uh emmanuel Aibogun, i think uh, for this time he will be here with us also i will, will be inviting evil everybody everybody you know um uh, the next question now is this brother you talk about the insecurity and you said it is not peculiar to uh, do a loan and then uh what about you know we have so we have it is i would say few problems that is affecting or you know like land grabbing is the government or the do state government what are they doing concerning land grabbing are they i, I, am, I am aware i am aware that well, they have set up a committee since you know, they've set up uh, a committee to look into the issue of land grabbing, and I'm aware that the committee is working. People are submitting their petitions and all of that. And uh, there's equally a, a magistrate court, you know, particularly dedicated to, you know, uh, people that have been uh, charged, you know, to, you know, face, and, and, their, and their cases are very speedy. Yeah, my order is going. So for people who may be watching this program right now, they should seek out that committee. They learn the anti-open grazing bill were passed into law sorry anti uh, no, uh private uh private property pro property protection bill was passed into law and the committee was set up for that private property protection you know the answer. so that law right now there's a committee working and people have called me to say they have land grabbing issues and i've directed them to locate that committee and channel their petitions to that committee i think one of the problems we have with this administration is that the relevant information that the people are supposed to have, the information is not coming out from the people saddled with the responsibility of communicating and informing those people. So people, those people are not getting enough information on what the government is doing. So and that is, that is, you know, further creating the gap, you know, where people just make different speculations about the activities of government because people are not getting adequate information, and that. It's really, really a weak link that many people have complained, and many of us we have observed. We will talk about it about in my program today, you know, and that there is a need for the machinery of communication within this government, you know, directed to those people to be improved on. So on the issue of land grabbing, uh, a lot I'm sure is going on there with that committee working. So people should turn their matters to that committee. That is the much I know about it. But as far as I'm concerned, I know when that committee was inaugurated and uh, i have directed people to that committee the people have directed up to three persons they have not come back to me so i believe that they are probably getting attention already okay okay uh i just came back from nigeria a month ago it's almost a month now i just came back i will say edu is safe because i live in the city in the city people are safe so, but every day we hear of this village, that village. But I know the uh, the vigilante, the uh, security network, the one uh, Obaseki created. I know they are doing their job. Uh, the, I, the we used to hear, you know, all these courtesan boys fighting themselves. I know now that can never happen again. But most of these boys now, I believe, you know, you understand what I'm saying. Will you say because what we hear, some people that is not from the state when they just hear maybe something happened like that protest the other day when that protest of uh of via in you know, via northeast i call my brother what is going on we are hearing protests 
It's nothing. They are not hearing God. They live in the city. They are not hearing. They say, oh, it is in uh, of you know something that happened. Some people that is not from our city, they just think it's like everybody in a do state. We are all in trouble, just like some yeah. region today where the where they are the one even terrorizing their people. They just think like yeah. our state is like their state where everybody living in fear, dying in fear, sleeping in fear. So my brother, yeah. I want you to. Is it those uh, those things? I know that we are hearing, you know, Fulani, you know, are we safe or we are not safe in those things? No, we, we, I think I think we can safe we can safely say for now that so far so good, you know, um, the skirmishes of uh, you know matters that we are getting based on insecurity and all of that, they are still very much under control, and if they are under control, really relatively we are safe. So yeah, I think our concern is that there is, um, you know. The, the room should not be given at all for 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 advancement. You understand the picture of what I'm saying? Uh, I think the, it's still very much under control. And again, our security people are recording successes. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you know that sometimes this is don't get reported, which is good. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, which is very good. And we have to be very careful too. Uh, only earlier today, somebody was kidnapped in Delta State. The person is talking now himself. He was kidnapped in Delta State by Delta State people. But he was handed over to the full and his men for negotiation. I don't understand. Was, Somebody was kidnapped in Delta State. He was kidnapped by people speaking Urubu, Isoku, and all those things. It's okay. Delta State people. Ah. Now, those Delta State people now handed him over to full and people in the forest. It was the full and people now, who now did the negotiations. Now, I don't know to what extent a thing like that could be happening in a do state or anywhere around. Now, until this man spoke about this thing today, it's in the national papers today, you understand what I'm saying? I began to wonder, okay, could it be that even the full and we're talking about all these bandits or the kidnappers and all of that, they have collaborators amongst the local people? Could it be? But the other, the other day, police paraded some group of boys you know, they interceded them, kidnapping somewhere around the new bypass area and all of mm -hmm. that. None of them, none of them look to me like Fulanese. Yeah. I think one of them was interviewed who said it was from whatever was from Delta or so. You understand what I'm saying now? So at, at the end of the day, uh, the Benin masses oh, no, yeah, they're, 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 they're. Well, yeah. So I think I think we need we need to we need to rejig our security apparatus. Re strategize, look at how we can begin to fish out some of the bad eggs even within our midst. All of this is we head to because security matter are matters that are you know in other places they are regularly reviewed and uh, re strategized, rearranged to meet you know to be fit for purpose. So I think okay. those uh, things need to be doing that. Yeah, now, uh, let, uh kind of uh, before we leave it though, before we let you go. I want to ask a question. 2024, there will be governorship election in Edo State. Now, a lot of people are saying the power, just like Nigeria, they will say the power must come to the South. It is a, uh, we share this thing. You do, I do. So people are saying the power is supposed to go to Edo, Edo Center. Uh, uh, how possibly is that? I just want to, because I asked some politicians in in when I in Nigeria in Edo there. He said some certain things to me that it don't it don't work like that. You can't just say it, it must come from this area. You understand? So I want to ask you. Twenty twenty four people are saying power supposed to me. I believe. I I also believe power supposed to come from Edo Edo Centra. Really, you understand me? But how possible is that? You know what did they supposed to do? Or are they go, going just to sit down because power must come from Edo Central? Oh, you can, you know, what do you have to say to that? Uh, I, 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 to be to be very honest with you, I am somebody who, 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 who believe very strongly in fairness, justice, and equity. Honestly, I, I, I dislike injustice. I fight injustice with everything I've got. Whether I, I win or I don't, whether I succeed or I don't succeed, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, speaking about Edo State, just like I today, I speaking, I'm make, I'm hugely campaigning for Peter Obi to become president of Nigeria because 
I believe that he's the most qualified and God has done it in a way that he's qualified and he's from the East. One region of Nigeria that has been mostly cheated you know, by Nigeria, as it were, and all of that. So I think that would pacify that region and, of course, you know, reduce agitations and stuff like that. And that's right. That's right. Those states, I mean, I have, I have made a broadcast concerning this a few times, and I've said, and I've said it publicly again, that we should, and those states should probably, should look for proper Asian person, you know, Asian person who is credible enough and, uh, you know, uh, let Asian, an Asian person become the governor of a do state from 2024. This might take, I know that there's going to be no. a number of believe persons who believe that that is not going to happen uh, because the Edo, Edo South will have the numerical strength to determine this, to that, that. You know, the, the rule of balance and equity and just and fair play require now that, you know, we, we, we identify an Asian person who is credible that we can vouch for, you know, to take the mantle of leadership and, of course, govern and do stuff for 2024. That's what I believe, and that's what I hope yeah. it should be. Yeah, and that's good. That's good. No, no, also with me, but there's another question. Why is it that, apart from uh, Dele Momodu is from Edo State, why is it that, you know, whenever there is, you know, people are saying they want to contest, they want to contest for president, why is it that people, especially, let me say Edo, I mean, we that speak Edo, why? There's nobody who, 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 you know, coming and saying they want to be president. Why? It has never happened before. I, I know it is now you are hearing uh, somebody like uh, Dili Momodu coming out, which is a do a do man. I understand, but it's not enough. Every for four years, you don't hear of a do man. I don't care if it's a do or Isa or not. A do not, but some from a do state. It's only now you are hearing Dili Momodu coming out. You know why? We always believe in our local politics, a governor, a chairman, local these all these. Why we always believe? In local politics, state politics, we don't vie for. You know. I, I I I think you know um, there, are, there 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 probably will be many different factors. Um, one of them is that uh, you know if you look at it as as uh, blessed as we are as a people, a do a do state people. You know, a do state people too. A do, a do state is quite small geographically. You know, but you find out that even your own local level, you know, you, you live abroad, even within your own environment, and those people have a way of pulling themselves down, pulling others down. You know, uh, to, to become relevant nationally, you need, we need to play our politics to that level where we have a number of people that are nationally relevant. You understand know, what I'm saying now? PDP just, I mean, APC just had their own national convention not long ago. How many of those state persons are occupying positions in that in that in that particular district? Apart from I think more ID occupying one ex official position and stuff like that. So I think we need to deliberately grow our people to have the national strength, like you know so many others are having. You understand? Our people just go to the national assembly and sit down and settle for the allowance and the salaries they get. They don't aspire to even hold principal office positions. And pull others no. up. You understand what I'm saying now? To be in that environment. You understand what I'm saying? So I think we need to grow in all of those areas. The time when Aneni was a, one of the one was a national leader, he put a number of issues up. You understand? So we need people like that, you know, to occupy positions and pull others up. Make a those state people become multiple ministers. Make them become minister of states. Make them become board of uh, board members of federal parastatals and all of that. Make them become national assembly, you know, members and stuff like that, and not just make them become national assembly members as senators or as a friend member, but as even principal officers heading important committees and not helping to uplift others. So, a those should be politically inclined enough to raise people that can always sustain, you know, the um umbrella of national polity as far as a those is concerned. If that is not there, you know. It, it's it's it brings us down to you know the issue we are talking about but not to worry not to worry uh in 2027 i will be running for the presidency of nigeria not That's to worry good. 
that's good, that's good. But they would listen, they are going to tell you you have to go and start from the grassroots. That's what they tell people. Go and be governor first, go and be a senator. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I have started. I, I must not be deputy, I must not be this, I must not be that. Obama wasn't in none of that. He became president. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, we, 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 we will fly, you know, the flag when the time comes. And uh, of course, we, we, we are already doing our bit to contribute to national polity. And so we will flag the flag, not just because we are from a two state, but because we know that, you know, we have, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, temperament, we have the experience. And of course, if we are very much in If you are the president, if you are the president of Nigeria now, you know, look at Nigeria today. People are complaining. It's a problem of insecurity. Nobody is safe in that country. Uh, look at Nigeria. See, mess. Go to I, I traveled to Nigeria recently. They immediately just enter our airport. You will know mm -hmm. that this is hellfire. There's no AC there. Everywhere is black. Now, if you are the president of Nigeria now, insecure. people are agitating, they want to get out of this union, they want to go on, you know, a separation. And some people are saying restructuring. And me and you, we know those agitating for restructuring is not going to be easy to restructure Nigeria. You have to pass through Senate. And to divide Nigeria is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. Now, but if you are the president of Nigeria today, what will you do for people to say no need for uh, agitating for separation? Or, you know, what will you do as a president? Uh, to, to be honest with you, um, even if I have the opportunity to become president of Nigeria today, I won't even run for, for office. I'd but rather, you say you to run. You change to a seven. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I say, for today, I won't run. I, I think, honestly, for now, I think, honestly, Nigeria as a nation, we need to look at somebody very capable, somebody who is prepared for this job, and not just prepared for the job, somebody from the eastern part of Nigeria. I, I okay, that's... is that the reason? Okay, no, 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 you don't understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I am not saying if you are the president now. If, just... not, if, if, I, if I was currently, uh -huh. uh, definitely Nigeria would not be this bad. That's one. The second aspect is that. There is no way we will compromise the issue of insecurity, you know, compromise the issue of security in Nigeria. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Um, we, we, we have a, a president currently who is, uh, many people see as a religious bigot. I am not a bigot. You know, we want to look at the issues the way they are. First and foremost, the security <laughs> of the ter territorial integrity of the Nigerian state is paramount for me, will be paramount for me. And which means that I'm going to lead from the front to know exactly what we are doing. You understand? I'm saying empowering our soldiers, our military, and our own intelligence. And the good thing about it is that they, our our leaders get intelligence, but they don't act on it. You got to picture what I'm saying now. So uh, apparently, the the leadership we have right now is from amongst them that we have this terror, this problem of terrorism. I am sure if I was the president, the issue of insecurity would not be a problem for our country. I think that the major focal point would have been the issue of our economy. You understand the picture from what I'm saying now? For instance, we are borrowing monies that we are not accounting for, borrowing and looting. Okay? There is nothing wrong in borrowing, but when you borrow and you loot, you understand, to the extent that, you know, Nigeria is not now, you know, now running almost, uh, you know, uh, as a borrowed nation. You understand? Yeah. You have a budget and you are spending money on your budget to service your budget. So at the end of the day, every day you are actually indebted. So I think that needs to be resolved, you know, very squarely. Now, I cannot afford to lead a nation where we are one of the highest oil producing, producing nations in the world and we are importing fuel from outside just because we are unable, you know, to sort out issues with our, our four refineries. What is the name? Dangote just single-handedly built a refinery, okay, a private refinery. A nation as Nigeria is unable to build a refinery. We cannot lead a, a, a nation as, as, as president of Nigeria, and we are still talking of megawatt, megawatts of electricity being generated. Today is 4,000, tomorrow is 2,000, and yet Nigerians don't have energy. When today, the world is even going greener. People are not tapping into 
what we have in our borders, natural resources like like like, like the solar light to provide electricity for their people. We have natural liquefied natural gas in abundance that we can use. Nations of the world they have looked in wars. People are now employing uh, you was it called uh, nuclear uh, 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 power uh, you know, activity and all of that. Bringing technicians from all over the world to build their nuclear you know plants to power their electricity and all of that, and they are not suffering. I have lived. I don't know. I have lived abroad for more than two decades, maybe as it were. I don't know if I've, I've noticed one day where they would just say light off. I don't know what you're doing. Know so why, how are they achieving it? You know. So these are basic things. By the time you provide some of these things, Nigeria will just run on its own. You understand? Know all we need to do is to just put the policies there. You know, to make the country run, and that's all it is. You know, you know, people friendly policies. You understand? Know and Nigerians are the most creative people in the world. Nigerians are the best people in the world. We are the most beautiful and diverse people in the world. And we can tap on this diversity. If we talk of the area of tourism, this is this is one area where we have we have not harnessed in any way, shape, or form. This is an area yeah. that can sustain the entire life of the Nigerian state if we harness it properly. So, my brother, there are so many areas to look at that can make Nigeria a settled state, and insecurity would be the least thing. You know that people worry so, about. Uh, before you go, I have two questions for you. If you don't want to answer these two questions, you can just bypass it. One, did you feel as a man feel marginalized in Nigeria? Because a few years ago, the Oba himself went to Abuja. They were discussing like building uh, our seaports, even our governor, and something happened. They said the governor, I mean the government or the federal government don't have the money to support us. So I want to ask you a question. As a man, did you feel marginalized in Nigeria? Uh, I'll answer this question with, with an illustration. As a human being, <coughs> okay, I, I, I live in the UK. Uh, people talk about the issue of racism a lot. I, I don't feel it because I don't subject myself to it at all. Everywhere I go, I'm very cocky-headed. My shoulders are well raised. I don't subject myself to anybody, you know. So I don't put, I mean, I've seen some white folks come to me to say, they look at me, they talk to me, they say, you know, they try to say, well, you know, I'm not racist. And I reply to them, I'm, you know, I'm not racist as well, you know. Am I racist towards you? He will say no. They will be very surprised. At how can a black man be saying he's not racist? Because they, they make him want to look like it's only the white man that is racist. So I think what I'm trying to say is that everywhere I am, I can't. Feel, I don't feel much like but I, I try to make myself the highest person should be. You understand what I'm saying? So as an adult man, I don't feel marginalized because in my own private personal life, I don't subject myself to anything like marginalization. I always ensure that I push my way in you know, to be ready. Relevant. <laughs> when you understand, I am not waiting for you to come and make me relevant. I want to make myself okay. relevant to the extent right. that you cannot time. avoid me. Yes. Okay. The last question. Uh, I think last year we hear of people, you know, people agitating for their own self determination. The the West, uh, the they call themselves the Odudua, and uh, we have others that call themselves the Biafra in the East. And we have the Niger Delta and the, and the rest. Uh, will you say we, the Edo's, uh, uh, we are part of the Odudua or we are part of those ones that call themselves the Biafrans or the Niger Delta? What will you say? Because a lot of noise, sometimes disturbing, I would say disturbing us. Sometimes they will say things that is not pleasant to us. You know, we, the Edo's, it doesn't matter, we respect our over. It doesn't matter. You, it's not your oba. Is the oba is our oba. We, if we say don't disrespect him, don't disrespect him. The Muslims respect. They can kill for their prophet Muhammad. Is their prophet? Leave their prophet for them. So we the Edus, we are just like that. We can fight you for disrespect. You can sometimes insult our father. We can take that, but don't insult our kids. Just it's always like that. Uh, that way, you know. Somebody like me, I feel Oba is not the one. My Oba is not the one controlling the oil in Nigeria. When they were signing 
the independent ITCC, they didn't call him there. They were the San Amagamation, they didn't call us there. We are just, I would say, a minority in Nigeria. When you are making your noise, why are you including, uh, like, including my king in your nonsense? It's not your problem. You are your problem. Go and solve your problem. So, what do you have to say to this? No, well, I, honestly, I, I, I don't really have anything to say, you know, directly to any of these. But I just think that um, there was. I will do it this again with an illustration. Um, there was time in history of the Greek, and uh, do I still remember this history? I think I do. Um, a certain child was born. I think it was Socrates or so. Was it so? Is that Socrates or Aristotle? I don't know. One of these uh, great philosophers was born. And uh, in those days, when the child is born, they take the child to a seer to look at the future of the child. No, yeah, yeah. And, mm. and the seer said this child was going to be a useless child, was going to be this, was going to be that. And so, because of that, the child was treated very badly. And when the child was growing up, he knew this and he comported himself, was full cost, and the child became one of the greatest philosophers ever. In his dying years, he went to the seer and he told the seer, he said, when I was born, you said I was going to be a useless person, I was going to be, I was going to be the dad. Now, I am one of the most important human beings that ever lived. What do you have to say to that? And the seer said, Oracle of Delphi was the seer. He said, man, know thyself. That was the response of the seer. So when you know yourself as a man, you know, um, whatever postulations that was made about you, they don't really matter. And that is where I said, I, I had proposed that I want a Edo State to run as an independent nation of, from Nigeria. I want a Edo State to be governed as a self-sustaining state. You understand? Because the Nigerian project, if we don't get it right for 2023, is bound to crash. When it crashes, everything will sort themselves out naturally. We don't need to make noise with this or make noise with that. We already know where the dividing lines are. We already know where the things are. We don't want to be noisy. We want that the Nigeria, Nigeria remain and Nigeria be together. But if Nigeria cannot be sustained and it crashes, a those states should be able to be self-sufficient enough to stand as an independent nation. You get the picture of what I'm saying now? So I have advocated that for anybody who's a governor of a those states, detach a those states from Nigeria in your economic planning, in your arrangement, in your everything. So when the, so the, what's it called, the allocation from federal government comes, or when the derivation comes, let there be a plus. But let us see how we can run a do state independently with resources raised within yeah. a do state and spent on a do state people. That we have, yeah. So if we're able to get that right, we will have developed a proper identity, which our forefathers bequeathed us long time ago, our great obas in the past. We were very independent people. We will conquer. You know, some yeah. people are very far and wide. You know, because we, we understood the importance of independence, the importance of identity. And that identity is what we, we need to embrace as a people. And so whatever noise anybody's making from the West, from the East, from the South, South, it doesn't matter. What matters is where we are, because we know ourselves and we are redefining our own identity to suit our purpose. Because the larger Nigerian society is like a pyramid standing on its head. And if we don't get it right from 2023, it is very likely that the Nigerian project will be a failed one in no time. And a those state must be able to stand on its own without a Nigerian state. Thank you very much, my brother. I really, really thank you. When the people listening to us, they know that, yes, this man with us today you know, when it comes to politics, these are the masters. I I purposely begged him to come. I didn't beg him like that, like beg, beg, beg. I just said, come, please. He said, forget. As a brother, he will come. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, but what I'm trying to say, because if I say I begged him, begged him, it will look as if he take long. You know, this is a brother. This is a brother. Immediately, I asked him, he said, no problem. Brother, I really appreciate him coming. I really appreciate him coming, and I know that a lot of people have benefited from what that he has been saying. You understand? He's a very gentleman. So, my brother, I really thank you. If you uh, just say, uh, you know, whatever you want to say before we call it a day. No, I mean, I mean, thank you very much. 
thanks for having me. Any any time, you know, anything that we can do to support our state, most especially, and support our country. Uh, of course, we are obliged. We are most obliged. And of course, I, I want to thank everybody who's been part of this. Thank you so very much. And uh, we we let us realize that we have a nation to save. And uh, whatever we can do in our very little way to save the Nigerian state, let's do. Uh, for the, for those people, uh, those state people in the house, I, I'm going to appeal to all of us. Um, governor Baseki is our governor. Is our brother is an Edo state man. The emotions and sentiments, you know, go into the governor, the killing, killing, killing attitude. I think we need to tone down a bit. Um, let us, because at the end of the day, you know, the most important project to all of us is a do state. You know, so irrespective of whoever is the governor of a do state. So I think we need to, you know, um, tone down uh, and, of course, explore the areas of peace uh, so that we can have the best that we possibly can have. You know, and at the end of the day, like I always say, uh, his governor of Edo State today, uh, in 2024, is going to be leaving, and that person is going to come in. So it's always very transient. So, but what remains and that is permanent is Edo State. And so, therefore, let us keep pushing for the good of Edo State, irrespective of whoever is there. Thank you very much, and God bless. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Goodbye, you too, man. Yeah, uh, you see, our brother, uh, Mr. Ibonsa Oriaki, the, the comrade show. Just write the comrade show. You can follow him there. It's a man, a do man who believe in you know uh, equal rights and justice, like, just like me. But in my feed, I'm a little bit ra radical. You understand me? And that's how God created us. There is what he can take. There is what I can take. <laughs> You can fuck me up. If you fuck me up, I fuck you up. So I'll be bringing, I think, three days time, four days time, uh, our brother Emmanuel S. Aibogun. Emmanuel S. Aibogun, uh, those are the government critics. Those are people who criticize government. And we need them too. Those who criticize the government, we need them. You understand me? They're also good. When, if you criticize the government, it's for the government to do things right. So I'll be bringing him. And for your information, I am bringing a lot of uh, IPOB here. You can go and tell them. Uh, the, your brother, they call him Kenga, is coming here. Your Biafra child is coming here. That is him, my boy. He's coming here. That mean, when the name of the Sigurian, when they hear him, <laughs> they, they are coming here. I know you guys are here looking at me. One, your brother is coming here. It's not to make mouth in their platform. Let them want to make the mouth here with me. You see my brother now. Just talk to my brother Kulekule. Like I said, Ikenga is coming here. Go and tell him he's coming here. The Afra child is coming here. Isima is coming here. Hey, what is his name? Uh, Ashebi. <laughs> Ashebi, your IPUB die hard people. They are coming. Go there. Go and be crying. Don't go. Wounded are not. They are coming here. I, I will know how fast. You know, they think they are fast. They know something. I'm going to open their brain and see. You know, all these people are invited here. You will be the judge. You are not of the same class. Me. So. You see, inviting these people here, like this Emmanuel, is also important. It's also important. When you bring them here, then you know their kind of person. It's also a government critic. Sometimes we need government critics. I ask him, he said, you will come, you have no problem. My sister in, uh, that was sister in uh, Canada, she's coming here. Everybody's coming here with the wounded soldier. Hey, pa, my brother, uh, Ranomigo, I think he's in Nigeria now. I don't know how long you stay, but definitely, either he's coming to this show or me, we will do it live in that same Niger. That's it. Everybody must come. Let us uh, talk. 
that Nigeria. So, this is where I will end the program. Like I said, Emmanuel Bugu is, is, is next, it's coming. Uh, I think after Emmanuel Bugu, our sister in Epme, after in Epme, there is one, uh, you know, Biafra child. Biafra child is called, yeah, I think Biafra child. There's another IPOB strong guy. I, don't, I can't remember his name. That one is also coming. I'll print their picture very soon. You will be seeing their, their poster. So this year I'll call it a day. I really thank you all for being with us today. Let people say their mind. Let people say their mind. That's it. I'm the one that's really I thank you for being with us. I'll, uh, it's going to be Manuel Bugo, I think, uh, three days' time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, three days' time. On the first, that will be in a uh, bus, bus three. On the 12th, is uh, our Isam brother, who was once IPOB member, is coming to the show. And Ima, brother, you all know him for over a year now. He used to come to my show here, but for over a year now, he just was, you never got, I'm inviting him back. Because he knows everything. <laughs> you know that guy, Naima. He knows everything that happened in Nigeria, what well, little is evil, everything, everything, everything. Just like uh, this guy, uh, what is his name? Um, if you see him talking, you'll be thinking you don't like the people of the South. It's, no, he's just saying the truth. So I'm bringing him next. That will be next month anyway. Maybe three weeks from now. So, okay. yeah, the truth is our religion here. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>